In Indianapolis, I'm Jim Huber. With an explosive offense led by Manning, the Colts are thinking nothing less than making it to the Super Bowl this season. And they open the regular campaign season and back at quarterback is Cordell Stewart. Stewart going deep to first round draft pick Plexico Burris, who makes the nice grab. On the same drive, Stewart finds Burris again on the slant for a gain of 22 yards. It would set up a touchdown for the bus, Jerome Bettis. And then with 20 seconds left in the half, Pittsburgh backup QB Kent Graham throws it up and Burress grabs it for the touchdown. After a couple of rough seasons, the Steelers with some promising early signs. On to our play. And this game was all Patriots. Already 6-0 pass, and Michael Bishop finds Kevin Falk, who breaks several tackles and finds his way into the end zone. Third quarter, still 13 to nothing, Patriots. Tim Rattay hits Justin Swift, but he's stopped in his tracks. Late third, Michael Bishop goes with the college rollout and makes it into the end zone untouched. This would be a 22-yard run. The Patriots with an easy win, 20 to nothing. Now that game was shown live on American television and it featured the debut of Dennis Miller as NFL commentator for the ABC network. Miller, who is known more for his stand-up comedy act than his football knowledge, was hired to add more excitement to the broadcast booth. How did he do? There were mixed reviews, but you can judge for yourself after watching some excerpts of his performance. I uh, know a lot of you people are thinking that I won't take this seriously, but I just want you to know it is a game, but I also realize it's a game many of you take seriously. It's not the Vatican, but then again, the Pope doesn't have to go across the middle on guys like Ronnie Lott very frequently. I've uh, hipped my people in HBO that when I say golly, uh, it means something okay, else. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> that's right. I didn't want to break the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> he's dropping obscure references, but at least he's talking about football players and not political figures from the 15th century or something like that. He's not here tonight. He had some minor groin surgery. I'm not sure there is such a thing as minor groin surgery. Anybody has a sharp <laughs> implement around my genitalia, I'm thinking it's major, but maybe that's me. He's cracking really bad jokes. I'd rather hear about the two teams in the game and not, uh, not his latest comedy skit. I cannot tell you how lost I am. Who is Dennis Miller? I think it's time to call it now, and I'm going to say start blow drying Teddy Koppel's hair, because this one's done. Oh, we are not done to the Dallas Cowboys against Atlanta Falcons. With the Falcons threatening inside the five-yard line, Chris Chandler had his pass picked off in the end zone. Darren Hambrick took the lateral, ran it up the far sidelines before being taken down to the 37. On the ensuing drive, Troy Aikman hooking up with the rocket. Ishmael in a 23-yard gain. Another field goal increased the Cowboy lead to 6-0. Now late second quarter, the Falcons answering. Backup quarterback Tony Graziani. Played pretty well in NFL Europe this past season, hitting big target Brian Finneran. Six yards, the Tokyo Dome crowd on their feet. Graziani tossed another touchdown, this time for Maurice Smith. The Falcons go on to a 20-9 win, and they drop Dallas to 0-7-1 in their eight overseas games. In Major League Soccer in the USS, keeping Green Bay Packers star quarterback Brett Favre out of his team's game in Denver early on. Brian Greasy hooks up on the catch and run with Ed McCaffrey. Looks like he might go all the way. 61-yard pickup set up a field goal. Greasy, 10 for 16 with 156 yards. Matt Hasselbeck starting in place of Favre. Thanks a lot, Brett. I enjoyed it. Kavika Pittman knocking Hasselbeck's helmet off. Hasselbeck says, no problem, I'm okay, bring it on again. Fourth quarter, Danny Werfel in for the Packers. Nice toss here, connects with a diving Charles Lee to set up a touchdown plunge, but Denver won at 26-20 to go to 2-0 in the preseason. Green Bay fell to 1-1. I need Carl Pickens and the Tennessee Titans looking to gain a measure of revenge on the Rams for last season's Super Bowl loss. First quarter, the Titans go to Pickens right away. Steve McNair connecting with him to set up a first and goal. McNair 10 of 18 for 74 yards and this touchdown strike to Frank Wycheck that com completed the drive. Titans up 7-0. On the other hand, Kurt Warner, first snap from center. How do you do? Kenny Holmes busts through and sacks Warner, who was 0 for 1 for 0 yards. Unfamiliar numbers for him. More miscues for the Rams. Oz Akeem drops the punt, recovers, but as he tries to return it, hit by Perry Phoenix and just takes his head off. 
Well, just his helmet. But Neil O'Donnell rubs a little salt in the wound, hitting a rookie tight end Aaron Kinney for the touchdown. Titans in a laugher 30 to 3 to gain a very small measure of revenge for last year's Super Bowl loss. Ask any Rams fan, and they'll take that trade off any day. Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts, who led 14-0 in the first quarter and would extend that lead when quarterback Peyton Manning went up top for Marvin Harrison, who scored the 77-yard touchdown. The Steelers hit back to trail just 24-17. With 10 seconds to play, quarterback T. Martin ran the ball in for a touchdown on fourth down. Pittsburgh went for the win with a two-point conversion. The Pevy Pearson was stopped short of the end zone. The Colts with a narrow win. For the world tries to go deep to Bill Schroeder, but his pass is picked off by Sam Madison as Brett Favre looks on. Midway through the fourth quarter, 10-7 Dolphins now, 13 quarterback Danny Werfel in for Green Bay and the short pass to Danny Driver. He eludes the tackle and then races all the way, 80 yards for the touchdown as the Pack take a 14-10 lead. Same score, 53 seconds left, and check out the punt return from Miami rookie Ben Kelly. Goes on the sideline, cuts back, and he has only one man to beat, but that man, Eugene McCaslin, makes the tackle, tripping him up. He can't get in for the touchdown. The ball is on the two-yard line. Next play, 30 seconds left. Miami does score. Mike Quinn, under pressure, finds rookie Dion Dyer, and that is the game-winning touchdown. The Dolphins win 17-14. to 14. Two for one. It's the first week of the new NFL season in the United States and all eyes on the big spending Washington Redskins who hosted Carolina in their opening game. After the Redskins lost in the second round of the playoffs last season, owner Daniel Snyder forked out more than $200 million for new players to bolster their defense. Those players include former Dallas cornerback Deion Sanders, while Reggie White came out of retirement to suit up for Carolina, and Bruce Smith is a $25 million addition for the Redskins. After Washington scored from their opening drive, Carolina hit back from the ensuing kickoff. Michael Bates takes it all the way for a 92-yard touchdown. Little wonder that Norm Turner, the Redskins coach, is none too happy about it. The unfancy Panthers competed well, but the Redskins wore them down in the second half. Brad Johnson with the rushing touchdown as the big spenders make a winning start. A tribute to the late Derek Thomas, the Kansas City linebacker, killed in a car accident in January as the Chiefs hosted Indianapolis. His mother on hand to remember the much-loved number 58 for the Chiefs. The fancied Colts taking the lead in the third quarter after Peyton Manning dumps the screen pass off to Edgar and James. It's 14-7 Colts, and Manning is happy with his highly rated offense. Deep in the fourth quarter, Elvis Gerback looking for the go-ahead touchdown for the Chiefs, but his pass is picked off by Jeff Burris, who takes it 26 yards for the score. The Colts, a team to watch in the 2000 season. Minnesota coach Dennis Green talking to his high-charge offense before the Vikings host Chicago, and the Bears really taking it to Minnesota. Cade McNown fires the pass to Marcus Robinson, who makes the great catch and beats Orlando Thomas for the 48-yard touchdown. 20 to 9 to the Bears in the third quarter. But the Vikings finish strong. Quarterback Dante Culpepper doing it himself, getting the go-ahead touchdown as Minnesota win indoors at the Dome. Changing pace a little. England's Desmond Howard was named MVP of Super Bowl 31 in the Superdome in New Orleans after a 99-yard kickoff return against New England. Then he was in Green Bay Packers colors. On Sunday, he returned to the Superdome to face the Saints and scored on a 95-yard punt return in a Detroit Lions jersey, helping his team to a 14-10 win. It was the longest punt return in Lions history. Howard showing lightning can strike twice in one place and is deserving of our play of the day. Week one of the NFL's regular season saw the Titans and Bills go at it. Last time they met, Tennessee staged a playoff miracle and later went to the Super Bowl. 
After Rob Johnson got hurt, Alex Van Pelt stepped in at quarterback. Big gain here to Eric Moulds down to the 20-yard line. That set up a Buffalo field goal, so they go up 16-13. And here's the kickoff, the Titans' Derek Mason. Doing well to advance the ball upfield, gets the seam, follows his blockers, races up near the midfield strike. Just seconds to go now. The Titans will line it up for a 60-yard field goal attempt. This for the tie. Craig Hentrich can't convert, and the Bills exact revenge. 16-13. Sacked four times in the game. Dallas quarterback Troy Aikman left Sunday's game with his ninth career concussion. And after his departure, the Cowboys had no chance against Philadelphia. Aikman's counterpart, Donovan McNabb. His athletic ability as he scores the first rushing touchdown of his career, the Eagles soaring. 34-6 lead. Philadelphia running back Deuce Staley. Career day. 201 on the ground, another 61 receiving, and the Eagles roll 41-14. It's the boys' worst opening day loss in 11 years. On Monday Night Football, and often such spoils go to the St. Louis Rams, who enjoyed their first game under the Monday Night Lights since 1988. Last year's league MVP, Kurt Warner, and the Rams hosting Terrell Davis, who was returning to the Denver Broncos after missing last year with an injury. And this one was a wild one. First quarter, Denver up 7-0, but the Rams, Oz Akeem, takes one back 85 yards for a touchdown. The two teams combining for over 900 yards in this game, not including kick returns, and were tied at 7. Third quarter, Rams up 28-20, Warner hitting Akeem, and he's gone. 80 yards for the score, escorted by Torrey Holt. Warner with the third best opening game performance in NFL history, 441 yards and three touchdowns. But he was also intercepted three times, most critically by Terrell Buckley here, who took this one back all the way for the touchdown and gave Denver a surprising one-point lead midway through the fourth quarter. But with three minutes left, Robert Holcomb pulls his way in from the one, capping a 75-yard drive. The Rams winning a shootout. Broncos throw everything at the Rams, but still came out on the short end after a dizzying Rams display. Bottom line is, you know, we were trying to put a lot of good coverages on the receivers, and, uh, you know, Kurt Warner had a hell of a football game. The receivers were unstoppable, and so wasn't their running back. Last year, it wasn't a lot of times that we, we had that the teams were in the ball game late against us. And um, I think that we showed some people, um, you know, we, regardless of what kind of ball game it is, what time of day, what day? I mean, we're going to come out and we're going to compete. By the way, the Broncos got a scare when Terrell Davis left the game in the second quarter with a leg injury, but it wasn't a recurrence of the knee injury, only a twisted left ankle. But the Broncos were not taking any chances and kept their star running back out for the rest of the game. The Super Bowl champion Rams got an unexpectedly tough battle in Seattle late in the fourth quarter with the game tied. The Seahawks returned a Warner fumble for an apparent touchdown, but it was reviewed and called an incomplete pass. So the Rams had new life, and they did take advantage as Warner with a pump fake would connect with Torrey Holt deep down the sideline inside a minute to play to set up the game-winning field goal. St. Louis escaped Seattle 37-34 to improve the 2-0. The Seahawks fell to 0-2. And, and a great finish in Baltimore where Ravens coach Brian Billick saw his team fight back from 17 down at the half to beat Jacksonville. Tony Banks touchdown pass to Shannon Sharp inside a minute to go gave the Ravens a thrilling three-point victory. Baltimore improving to 2-0 to take sole possession of first in the AFC Central over Jacksonville, which fell to 1-1. One one. Been waiting a long time to perform on the kind of stage he was given Monday night at home. Testaverde, who missed all of last year after snapping an Achilles tendon in the season opener, would star against visiting New England. The Patriots are coached by ex-Jets assistant Bill Belichick, and we fast forward to the fourth quarter. Drew Bledsoe gets chased toward the sidelines, but somehow finds Eric Bjornsson for the six-yard touchdown. Patriots up 19-7, but the Jets fight back. Testa Verde lobs it to Wayne Corbett. The ball goes through defender Antonio Langham's hands. 
And the Jets are now within five on New York's ensuing possession. Testa Verde gets it going. Looking downfield for Dedrick Ward. He makes the amazing one-handed catch. And that sets up this. Next play from scrimmage, Testa Verde, the lob to Quebec. Another great catch, somehow striking the ball inside the pylon. New York turns a 12-point deficit into a one-point victory. They're 2-0. We had a comprehensive 17 years was duly honored Sunday night at Pro Player Stadium. Marino walked away from the game last year after spending his entire career in South Florida. A record-setting quarterback had his number 13 jersey retired. He became the 13th Dolphin player to have his name put into the team's ring of honor. A lifelike statue of bronze also unveiled. More than 73,000 fans came out to pay him homage. Many of his former players and coaches as well as family members were there to watch. As for the game itself, Marino wannabes liked what they saw against the Baltimore Ravens. Dolphins' current quarterback, Jay Fiedler, making just his fourth career start, played solid, the scramble, the pass, and the touchdown. That's Lamar Smith's second of the game, and it's 19-6 Miami. On the ensuing point after, Olinda Mare's kick didn't go through the upright. Instead, it smashes off the umpire's cap, which was equipped with a camera. <laughs> Dolphins turn the Ravens' world upside down on Dan's big night. To Oakland now for an AFC West duel. Denver in punt formation. Tom Ruin can't get the ball off. Randy Jordan with the block, and he'll cover it in the end zone to make it a 24-all game. A huge special teams play, but the Raiders' good fortune would end there. Mike Anderson finding a seam off the left tackle. 20-yard gainer sets up another Bronco field goal, and they go on to win it 33-24. Now, the rest of Sunday's late NFL scores. Washington Redskins. Hotshot billionaire owner Daniel Snyder shelled out multi-millions for a slew of high-priced stars and highly touted draft picks. And like in the business world, he expects a major return on his investment. So far, it hasn't really happened. The Redskins, coming off a loss at Detroit, laid another egg in front of their owner at home against the rival Dallas Cowboys, despite being heavily favored. Things did start well enough for the Redskins on a reverse punt return. Handoff from Deion Sanders. This is Champ Bailey racing deep inside Cowboys territory to set up Washington's first touchdown and a 7-0 lead later in the first quarter. Cowboys quarterback... Randall Cunningham, after fumbling the snap, he's going to find a wide-open Chris Warren on the blown coverage. Tie up the game, and perhaps a star is born in Cunningham. Tisk tisk. He is far more mobile than the injured Troy Aikman. And Cunningham, as you see here, buys himself some time in hitting Jackie Harris for the 16-yard touchdown that gave the Cowboys a 24-14 fourth-quarter lead. Now late in the game, the Skins trying to get in position for a tying field goal, but Brad Johnson, way overthrown, picked off. The underdog Cowboys beat the rival Redskins for the sixth straight time and give new coach Dave Campbell his first win. I think we played well today on uh, all, all three phases. The defense stepped up in the end, but the offense, man, they kept the ball. I think our best defense is when our offense moves the ball well. It was crucial. I mean, it was a good game, man. We both put up a good fight tonight, and it's, as always, when the Redskins and Cowboys play, it's going to be a good fight every time. So just three games into the season, the Redskins at 1-2 and two already are two games behind the undefeated New York Giants in the NFC East. That makes next Sunday night's game in New York against the Giants a virtual must-win game. The reinvigorated Cowboys, meanwhile, play host to San Francisco. In Major League Baseball on Monday, next All-American type quarterback, and the league just may have found him in Peyton Manning of the Indianapolis Colts. On Monday, Manning had his coming out party as the Colts played host for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look at this throw in the opening quarter to a wide open Marvin Harrison. The Jags' Aaron Beasley is left behind. Harrison galloped 76 yards for the touchdown and an early 7-0 Colts advantage. It was only beginning. After Jacksonville came back to tie, Manning floats the ball across the middle. Not the greatest of tosses, but into the arms of Terrence Wilkins nonetheless, the Colts would go ahead to stay. More Manning late in the first half. He has plenty of time to hook up with Jerome Payton in the end zone. The Colts quarterback with three scoring passes in the opening half. Indy led 21-14 at the break. Manning would finish with 40 days through the air, including this short score to Ken Dilger. At a franchise record 440 passing yards, the Colts improved to 2-1 on the young season. It's time for a break. World Sport is right back.
Well, Sunday's marquee showdown had the Washington Redskins hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who appeared to be out of it, trailing 17-7 with just over two minutes to play. But Sean King hooks up with Riddell Anthony for a touchdown to cut Washington's lead to three. Now five seconds left in regulation. Martin Gramatica from 42 yards out, and it's good. He goes nuts, and we go to overtime. In overtime, Deion Sanders. He'd been shut down in the first four games of the season on punt returns, but look at him go. He's got an opening. Looks like he might score, but he's hauled down at the six-yard line. But three plays later, Michael Husted for the win. Yes, the Redskins hand Tampa their second straight gut-wrenching defeat and left both teams at three and two. It's time to close out World Sport with the play of the day. For it, we go right back to the NFL's fifth Sunday and Minnesota's game with Detroit. All tied fourth quarter when the Vikes strike from the 50-yard line. Dante Culpepper to Randy Moss. Somehow, between two defenders, Moss pulls it in for his third touchdown catch of the day. How does he do it? Don't ask. Just enjoy. The Vikings stay unbeaten, and Moss takes the play of the day. A 50-yarder! And that will wrap another world. Washington Redskins after Sunday's overtime victory over Tampa Bay. The Redskins learned on Monday that star offensive lineman Trey Johnson could be out for the rest of the season after tearing a ligament in his left knee. It somewhat dampened the euphoria of Sunday's win over the Bucks, who made a startling comeback late in the game. Down 17-7 with just over two minutes to play. Sean King fumbled, regrouped and threw the touchdown pass to Riddell Anthony, 17-14. With five seconds left in regulation, Martin Gramatica booted a 42-yard field goal to tie the game and send it into overtime. There, Dion Sanders fielded the punt and returned it with interest. A 57-yard run all the way to the six-yard line for Sanders, which set up the game-winning field goal for Michael Husted from 20 yards. The Redskins with a crucial win. Both teams are three and two for the season. The Sunday night game saw the Philadelphia Eagles hosting the Atlanta Falcons. It was 6-0 Eagles in the third quarter when Donovan McNabb hit Torrance Small for a 70-yard touchdown reception. The two-point conversion made it 14-0 Eagles. There is a marker down. Team the Falcons struck right back through Tim Dwight, who was playing for the first time since having his appendix removed recently. He fielded the punt and sprinted 70 yards for the touchdown to cut the home lead in half. No flag. But that was as close as it got for the Falcons. Philadelphia ran away with it, literally. Brian Mitchell added an 85-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter to an 89-yard kickoff return earlier in the game as Philadelphia won 38-10. Our play of the day also comes from the NFL. It's one of those punt return specials as well, which comes from the New England Patriots win over Denver. The game was in the third quarter when the kickoff was collected by Denver's Dalther O'Neill. He ran up the middle, spun away from a couple of defenders and went fully 87 yards for the touchdown. O'Neill's a rookie cornerback in the NFL, but plays like this will earn him his NFL stripes in double quick time. Triumph in defeat for O'Neill for our play of the day. Diner. Ball League. But the second hottest? How about Kansas City's Elvis Gerbach coming into Monday night's AFC West battle against Seattle? Elvis had thrown for five touchdowns over his last two games. It's headed to raucous Kansas City and see if Elvis could keep his red-hot hand. Actually, his counterpart, John Kitna, struck first. The touchdown pass to Itula Mealy in the corner. 7-0 Seattle. Second quarter. Gerbach goes to work. Check out this catch by tight end Tony Gonzalez. Great grab. 15-yard touchdown. We're tied at 7. And the patented slam dunk by Gonzalez. Now, Chiefs down 17-7. They start the comeback. Gerbach to Derek Alexander in heavy traffic. Great catch. Gerbach with 256 yards passing. Now scored tied late in the fourth. Mike Cloud makes things sunny for Chiefs fans. Dives in for the end zone. 24-17 Kansas City. Seattle with a last gasp effort. Kitna deep for Daryl Jackson. But it's picked off. Jerome Woods doing the honors. KC holds on to win 24-17 to improve to 3-2. Seattle fell to 2-3. So, with five weeks down in the NFL, there are still three undefeated teams, that being the high-flying St. Louis Rams, who are on pace to shatter the NFL's season scoring record by a whopping 25 percent. 
the New York Jets, and the surprising Minnesota Vikings. Still to come, who needs Ken Griffey? The Action from the NFL, Washington dealing with some problems as they took on Philadelphia. Albert Connell and wide receiver coach Terry Rubisky having some words on the sideline. And then in the third quarter, after a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision, Irving Fryer is carted off the field on a stretcher. We go late to the fourth quarter, tied at 14. Donovan McNabb rolls out, and Daryl Green intercepts. And he knows what to do with that when it runs it all the way back inside the Eagles' 20-yard line. And that would set up a field goal attempt by Michael Husted. And he nails it. The game winner with four ticks left on the clock. Redskins squeak out a win in Philadelphia. There was another dramatic ending in the game between San Francisco and Oakland. The Niners have a chance to win in overtime, but Wade Rich's field goal from 29 yards is blocked. The special teams come through for the Raiders. Oakland will take advantage of that great defensive play to win the game. Rich Gannon hooks up with Tim Brown for the 31-yard game-winning touchdown. The surprising Raiders improve to 4-1 on the season. 34-28 was the final. Time now. Down on week six of the National Football League season on Monday with an NFC Central Division duel of the highest order. Minnesota, the unbeaten leaders of the pack, played host to Tampa Bay the struggling preseason favorites to win the division. So, you know, the Bucks came into the Metrodome with a chip on their shoulder. After a Keyshawn Johnson fumble, Vikings quarterback Dante Culpepper from the shotgun takes aim at the end zone and goes in from 28 yards out, Minnesota drawing first blood in the opening quarter. Later in the first, the Bucks quarterback, Sean King, making a move of his own. The 11-yard touchdown run, not at the game at seven all. 20 to 16 Vikings in the fourth. Gary Anderson on to attempt a field goal, but it's blocked. Warren Sapp with the block. Donnie Abram with the touchdown, 57 yards, 23-20 Tampa Bay. Same score later in the quarter. Culpepper to Randy Moss and watch him come down in the end zone with the football, a 42-yard reception. The Vikings hold on to celebrate an undefeated season five games in. I expected out of myself and the rest of the team, and we knew that we can do it, but a lot of people didn't think so, but we're going to keep rolling from here. We had them right where we wanted them. We were having the ball game from the start to finish, and you know, we did turn the ball over too many times with the short field, and they, you know, they score on two 20-yard drives and you know, do some other things like that that, you know, kind of was crazy. Third and one, we got to get that. Fourth and one, we got to hit the wide open, man. I mean, we're just not making the plays to win the game. Well, we expected to be 5-0. and oh. We really did. I think that... Uh, we said one thing. We said this team reminds us of the 1998 team. We have chemistry, our work ethic, uh, ability to win close ball games. Those are the things that we think are really significant. And so we like where we're at right now, and now we just got to get another win, keep it going. And then there were two. Coach Green's Minnesota Vikings and St. Louis remain the lone unbeatens in the National Football League. Week 7 finds the Vikings in Chicago to play the Bears, while the Rams host the Atlanta Falcons. Colts and the New York Jets locked up in a key AFC East battle. The winner would stay one game behind the 8-2 Miami Dolphins, while the loser would likely spend the remaining six weeks of the season battling for a wild-card playoff berth. To Indianapolis we go. They always get fired up for their Colts. The Colts first drive. This is Peyton Manning. He was on target all night. He was on target here. Hits Marvin Harrison for the touchdown. The Colts go up 7-0. That lead would expand to 23-7. But the Jets have been a fourth quarter comeback team this year. They cut it to 23-15 and were driving late in the game. But Vinny Testaverde on fourth down throws this one incomplete to Lavernius Coles. No fourth quarter magic this time for the Jets. Indianapolis wins it to improve the 7-3. The Jets fell to 6-4. A wild one between the Tennessee Titans and the Baltimore Ravens. Fourth quarter tied at 17. Baltimore's Trent Dilfer. Where are you throwing that? That is picked off by Tennessee's Perry Phoenix, and he is gone. 88 yards for the score. However, the extra point was no good. 
And that would be a costly miss as the Ravens would get another chance trailing by six instead of seven with a half minute left. Trent Dilfer would atone for the earlier interception rolling out right. And he finds Patrick Johnson for the two yard score. The extra point would be good. Baltimore by one. However, Al Del Greco, who did miss the extra point earlier, had a chance to atone with a field goal for the Titans. A 42 yard attempt. No. Wide right. Baltimore handing Tennessee its first ever loss in two years at Adelphia Stadium. Baltimore like improves to 7 and 4. The, the Titans Ravens. fell to 8 and 2. Now here's sides. all of Sunday's numbers, starting with New Orleans improving to 7 3, but losing star running back Ricky Williams with a broken ankle.